Tony Andrews, and some of you may recognize me from my TV show, So Many Books. But tonight, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm going to talk to you about the Law of Attraction. And to help me with that, I've got some very special guests that I'd like to introduce to you. Janet and Sharon Messina. Janet and Sharon are, um, well, they're cousins. They're not, they're not sisters, although they share the same last name. Mm -hmm. And welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming. And I think probably a lot of our, um, our viewers are familiar with the Law of Attraction. Um, I think The Secret, the, the book and the movie made it really, really popular mm -hmm. and brought it to the forefront. But Janet was talking about how it's something she's known about for years. And how did you first uh, become aware of it and get interested well, in The Law of Attraction? Well, basically, I uh, saw a number of books. I read a number of books. Uh, uh, Waddles, um, uh, Robert Collier, uh, Norman Vincent Peale, the mm -hmm. uh, Positive Thinking book, and then The Secret. And uh, that's how I became aware of positive thinking and its power. And it was um, on that basis that um, I created this uh, tool. You created a tool to help people with the law of attraction. Right. And we should, Sharon, what is the law of attraction? I mean, to me, mm -hmm. you and I, we're so familiar with it, we assume everybody exactly. knows what it is, but not everybody knows what the law of attraction is. Well, very basically defined, it's like attracts like. So if you think positive, you'll bring positive into your life. If you're constantly thinking negative, then you're going to bring negative into your life. If you go around with a sourpuss all the time, you're probably not going to have a very good day um, and meet very nice people. So, um, uh, you know, the law of attraction is always there. It's always in motion. It doesn't matter what religion you are, how wealthy you are, how poor you are. It's, it's, it applies to everybody equally. Mm -hmm. um, it's based on what each individual thinks. Uh -huh. And it's something that I, I, I was aware of for a long time. But I think, like many people, when The Secret became so popular, I, I started thinking about it more as a law as something mm -hmm. that I could could um, actually leverage and take control of it, mm -hmm. and and I was I had been watching you know the the this this movie and I had been reading some other things and and I kept hearing a lot about visualization mm -hmm. and about how if you wanted something you should visualize it as if it had already happened. Right. So I had at this time I had just quit my my regular job to be a full time writer. And I was um, getting ready to do some book touring, and I was saying, "Gosh, you know, I want a motor home. If I just, ha it would be so great if I didn't have to like stay in hotels or stay on front <laughs> sofas because, you know, you've got these funky places that you're going to, and it's like, oh, I wish I had a motor home." I said, "Well, I'm going to visualize that I have a motor home." I said, "But I didn't really. It had been years since I'd even been in a motor home, and I was like, well." you know, I want to drive a motorhome. So I go to the <laughs> motorhome dealer and I said, I want to drive a motorhome. And they're like, so how much money do you have? I'm like, well, I don't really have any money, but I'd like to drive a motorhome. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me drive a motorhome. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I could not get anyone. All they wanted to do was qualify me for the sale. Mm -hmm. but I said, well, I really want to know the experience of driving a motorhome. And I want a big motorhome because the motorhome that I want is a good size one. And I went back to where I was staying, and I was looking at pictures of motorhomes on the computer, and I had people over for dinner. And the guy, who was a, a real automotive expert, was looking at the pictures on, he says, what you, what's this? He said, oh, I was looking at these motorhomes. He says, oh, you don't want one like this. You want one like the neighbor down here has. Mm -hmm. He's got a great one. He keeps it in his airplane hangar. There was an airport there. He says, you should go over there and ask him to let you drive it. So I said, okay, and I went over. And he let me drive it, with very, very nice man. And I said, this is exactly what I want. He goes, oh, it's not for sale. <laughs> I said, no, no, I understand that. But I was so excited. And I went for a ride in the, about 12 miles away to this little tiny coffee shop. And if you're ever in Melrose, Florida, the huge metropolis of Melrose, Florida, find the, the Take Me Magical Places Cafe, this little coffee shop. And I go in, and she's got some things about the law of attraction up on the wall. So I said, oh. As a matter of fact, I was just test driving a motorhome so that I could visualize owning a motorhome and use the law of attraction to attract a motorhome. <laughs> and we're having this discussion, and this little lady is sitting at the, the coffee shop. She goes, 
Really? Who's who was the guy who? And I said the name of the man mm -hmm. who had whose motorhome I had driven, and didn't think anything about it. Well, little did I know that this woman was his girlfriend, <laughs> and she didn't like traveling in the motorhome. She preferred to stay in hotels and get room service. Mm -hmm. She was really really tired of the motorhome, and she had gone to see him and says, "You need to go tell that young woman." that you're going to sell her that motorhome. Mm -hmm. And there's a knock at my door, and here's this old guy who says, I was thinking about it, and I think I should sell you that motorhome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and he sold it to me for a pittance, mm -hmm. for a pittance. So within you know, five days of deciding, mm -hmm. I want to have a motorhome, and I'm going to use the power of the universe to draw a motorhome to me, um, I had a motorhome. <laughs> Seeing the signs the universe was putting out, you both picked up to on get it and to took your action. result. It, it, so right. I, so after that, I was really, you know, as a believer, and but you know, time passes, mm -hmm. and you're really gung ho at first. But after a while, I was still trying to kind of do the exercises and to stop and think and to spend a certain amount of time a day, you know, with gratitude and being grateful and the the things that you're supposed to do. And, and I was sometimes finding it difficult to focus, you know. And then you t tell the story about the rosary. Well, when I, um, the only time I seem to be able to center my thoughts is when I'm saying the rosary. Otherwise, everything, when I try to concentrate, when, I, when I'm not, I, thoughts come in and out of my head and interrupt that, that centering of that thought. And the only time that doesn't happen is when I say the rosary. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, you know what? If I could get something uh, tactile in my hand to concentrate and center that positive thinking thought, as I do with the rosary, as I can center on the rosary when I'm saying it, I can use that power to create my own universe. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what, where I and got you, the idea and from. And you got this idea that you would actually create a, a physical thing. And you did, you mm -hmm. know, because you gave, you gave these things. And I'm going to hold one up here. These are called thought centering stones that you, um, you, you know, this, this idea that you came up with the rosary. And you gave one to me and said, you try this. Mm -hmm. You know, so Absolutely. I took them home and I've got them and I'm, you know, holding them in my hand. And it really helped because there's still the thoughts running through your mind. But each of the stones has a meaning, and it has something that, that, you know, that goes with it. And even when the thoughts are running through my mind, then I look back down, and I'm like, oh, right. The, the big gratitude here, so I'm gr grateful for, and each of the colors has a meaning. So I'm saying, oh, I am grateful for um, the material wealth is this one, and this mm -hmm. one is the success with my career, which I think about a lot as a writer, you know, that New York Times bestseller list. Ooh, here we are. <laughs> I'm so happy to be on the New York Times bestseller list. <laughs> the very first time I held them in my hand, um, they were so easy for me. I thought it would be fun to, um, to bring somebody who had never tried them before. Mm -hmm. So I called up my friend Sandy. <laughs> if Sandy, if you'd like to join us. Because I knew that Sandy knew about the law of attraction and, and, and was a believer in the law of attraction, but she hadn't ever seen the thought centering stone. So mm -hmm. I wanted um, for, for you to, I thought it would be fun to have somebody on the show and have you walk them through a first mm -hmm. time try of the thought centering stone. So welcome, Sandy. Hi, Hi how, how are you? How are you? <laughs> how are you? Um, I think Sharon should explain it because she is uh, the dream maker. I'm just the dreamer. So you just basically, 